Hey guys, Matt here with Matco Metalworks, and what you're about to view here is building steel stair stringers. And uh, I've been wanting to make this video for quite some time. Reason being is there's not a lot out there on uh, YouTube for steel stair stringers. There's a lot for wood carpentry style, but there's a big difference. Uh, reason is on, on wood, everything is actually notched uh, for the stairs, whereas these, um, you get clips and um, or, or the steel you know, tread play is actually just welded to the stringer. So the way we start this is uh, you see me here, I'm actually notching the ends of the channel. Um, we start with a jig that looks like this. It's just a aluminum plate that we, we had some, some drop pieces we made this out of. And you see you have a top and a bottom. So that's about 20 inches long or so. It's just a um, one eighth aluminum plate. And what we do, you have a top and a bottom. Um, these stringers, of course, this is 10 inch channel. These are uh, cut to length and that all de is determined by your blueprints. Um, everything's gonna be different. Um, normally we work off blueprints. Sometimes we do have to go out on site and uh, take field measurements and actually you know, do the drums ourselves. A lot of times we get the, the blue, you know, blueprints sent to us by our customers or by our contractors and um, you know, build them off of that. But the way we start, uh, I'm at the bottom end now, but I usually start at the top. I'll mark it with a piece of soapstone off that jig. Like I said, the, the channel's pre-cut, so I just slide the jig all the way to the end, mark it, go all the way to the other end, and mark that end also. Once you get uh, all four pieces, as, as I said, you've got four pieces of tennis channel here. You've got a left and a right to each set. And once I do that, then I'll start cutting with the plasma cutter. You can do this with a torch. You can honestly do it with a, a grinder and a cutoff wheel. It just takes, takes longer. A uh, plasma is definitely the, the quickest way but if you don't have that, there are other options. So what I do, you can see here, I've got a little a jig in my left hand. It's actually just a, a piece of scrap square tubing, inch and inch or inch and a half, whatever you've got. Anything will work to, um, to drag your torch against, and that keeps you from, um, uh, that allows you to, you know, do it a lot quicker. You can actually, you know, make a, a really clean, straight cut pretty quickly. So I did the bottoms, now I'll go all the way up to the top and uh, do the same thing up there. All right, so once you get those cut, what I'll do is I'll flip it over so the flat side is down. See me doing that here, I'm actually just flipping all four of them over. And then I'll just take a um, four and a half inch grinder and just take a flap wheel. I don't use a lot of grinding wheels on this just because uh, mostly it's just a slag from plasma cutting. And then uh, most of the welds we make on the inside of the channel, you don't really grind a lot. So what you see me doing here now is I've, I've deburred everything 
But what happens is we use a flat bar to cap the ends. You don't have to do that. A lot of times you'll see in hotels or on you know commercial buildings, they don't cap the ends. They just put their angle brackets on, leave the ends open. Uh, that's not the way we do it. I don't think it looks uh, as professional. It doesn't look finished at all. And so the, the way we do it is what you're about to see. And we take flat bar and actually where we, where we cut the ends, we take flat bar and cap everything. So it's all closed, it's all finished, everything's you know, solid welded. And it just gives a lot more finished look, a lot more professional. As you can see, I haven't welded anything yet. That's uh, there's a lot of prep work in these, in building stringers, um, from the from the cutting process, cutting the length, to marking them and cutting them, to uh, get the ends uh, coped or notched, you can call it. And then what I'm doing now is is uh, actually grinding inside the channel, the ten inch channel. There's actually like a little rolled edge, and if you don't grind that the flat bar won't fit. You still have to take it around the, the corner off the flat bar, but it helps if you actually grind the uh, little rolled edge on the inside of that channel. Everything fits a lot better. All right, so what I'm doing now, I get you a little a little bit closer shot here, and this is the capping process. You can see the angles that we've cut. That's what I call the notch or the cope on the end of the channel. And then we take inch and a quarter flat bar, inch and a quarter by three sixteenths, and actually cap the ends of the channel. That closes everything in, finishes it, gives it a lot a lot cleaner, a lot more professional look. Doesn't take that much longer, but like I said, a lot of times you'll see um, contractors or, or welding shops that don't do this, and it just, uh, I think it, it makes a big difference. So what I'm doing is just uh, fitting everything. You have to kind of round the corner of the uh, flat bar and also round the, or grind out the little rounded corner in the channel, and then I get everything tacked up. Now I'm at the other end, that was the bottom, this is the top. And I've already got the flat bar tacked in place. And as you can see, I've got one piece that actually sticks over. And what that does, you can see where I'm welding now, that piece sticks over about two and a half inches or so. That is actually the piece that attaches or, or hangs on the landing or the platform, which is on the second floor or third floor, or wherever you're going. And that allows you to, to hang that in place and the concrete 
will actually be poured flush with that piece. So what you do, you actually, when you install it, that piece actually hangs up on the, the landing or that platform and allows you to hold that in place until you uh, get, get it secured with um, bolts or anchors in the concrete. So I've got all the flat bar tacked in place. I'll spray it with some anti-spatter and then I'll start welding all of that to the channel. And most of the welds, 90% of them are on the inside so you don't have to grind anything. Um, we make it flush with the outside edge and um, once they're painted, they look extremely good. But we weld everything on the inside. There's one or two welds on the outside. Um, edges that we will grind but for the most part all of our welds are on the inside of the channel. All right, so what you're looking at here is the uh, top end of the stringer. And I'm just running a downhill bead there. And then I will go and make the long run. But like I said, everything's on the inside except for right there on the, the end of my gun. You'll see on that outside corner, we'll actually weld that and actually grind it all smooth. You see that. That's at the very top of the the stairs so that's something it's very visible so we'll weld that and grind it then I'll make this long run as you can see I'm spitting a little bit having an issue with my gun we've had a, a small issue with this welder for some reason this is a, a Lincoln 216 machine and not sure exactly what what the problem is we've switched wires brands about a month or so ago and ended up having to change the drive rollers and the liner in the gun and uh, still having an issue. So not sure what it is, but we'll get it figured out. Always make sure you use uh, anti-spatter as well on stuff like this. This all has to be finished painted and uh, you don't want your painter to have to take a grinder and grind on it to get all the anti or the, the spatter off of it. So make sure you spray a little bit of anti-spatter on there. So uh, 
I'll get that welded up and um, this will be part one to this video. So stay tuned for part two and you'll see how we do the layout for the uh, stair clips, how we put those on and uh, weld them up. And uh, that'll be uh, the wrap on stair, uh, steel stair stringers.